Well, ever since I was a little girl, I've been in love with doll houses. I used to make my own, get this, ginger, out of shoe boxes. And if you feel the same way that I do, then you're going to love what's coming to the Valley. Ginger Anderson is with the Small World Miniature Club, and she's also here with an artist. We're going to meet Pete in just a second. But they brought along some of the works of art some, for some local, I, I, we'll call them artists, because these are insane works of art on a mini, mini scale, Ginger. Thank you. <laughs> How long have you been into to miniatures? I've been doing it about 35 years. Really? <clears throat> now let's talk about some of the things that you brought along today and uh, tell us how, how long does it take to create something like this beautiful little adobe house we're looking at? Well, some people can work on them for a year or longer. Um, I'm not sure how long it took this artist to do it, but she's She's very talented and goes into great detail and makes her own flowers. Really? So the flowers can take a long time to make. And so many artists today really make some of their own materials as much as they possibly can, yes. right? Let's look at this house right over here. Actually, it's not a house. What would we call this? It's a cute little cottage. Little shop. I love the detail. How, how difficult is it to go in? And is there a lot of, uh, do you research it? Or is it just something that is personal preference? Yes, and we have clubs in the area where you can learn how to do some of the different techniques to, to know how to put these together. And you know what's interesting? When I think about a dollhouse, you know, you think about real, you know, cute and pretty. And you don't really think of, like, Day of the Dead. <laughs> this is so adorable. When somebody creates a house like this, is it really for their own pleasure? It's for their own pleasure. And you display? It where? Where do you display your houses? Um, we display these at our show once a year. Right. The Phoenix Miniature Show that's coming up this weekend. Yes. And the club has been doing it for 36 years. Wow. Look at all the, I mean, you, you would have to spend an hour just looking at each one of these and just looking at all the detail. I don't even know if you could see this, but, but right in here there's, there's apples where they're bobbing for apples. There's water falling out of the waterfall. Does it take a lot of maybe trial and error to find materials that really work? Yes, it does. That's amazing. Come on over here and take a look at this one. This is so beautiful. A lot of people have theirs encased. So is there a reason for that? It's just so people don't touch them or it's they get dirty? Keep, keep dust out and keep things from being damaged, you know, especially when we have them on display. Everybody likes to touch. Mm. Yes, I bet. Let's come on down here. Look at this. This I, I remember seeing one of these last year at the um, where was I? At the fairgrounds. At the fair, yes. And this is just something all just handmade. This is like created from Yes from nothing. Yes. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's go on over here to Pete. And Pete, Pete Aquisto, you are, I, I, I think, I think um, world renowned is, is pretty much what everybody has said about you. An amazing artist, but look at what Pete creates here. Zane, I'm going to need you again because he's so teeny tiny. You're a silversmith and mm. you make each one of these little teeny, just to give you a reference, Okay, here's my, here's my finger. Look how tiny that is, Pete. <laughs> how long does it take you to make these? It depends on the pieces. Some of them take weeks and some of them take a couple of days. I, Pete, I, I can't even barely hold them, let alone. Look at that. That's a little comb. Here's a little, little vanity set. Look at this entire, entire place setting. I mean, the detail is unbelievable. How do you Thank research you. the detail? I, I use... Uh, books that have uh, antique pieces in mm -hmm. them and and the idea is to copy antiques exactly the way um, they look in full size in one twelfth scale in one twelfth scale now a mm -hmm. lot of uh, of some of the dollhouse makers have said that having one of your pieces is is um, is pretty in important to them that it's mm -hmm. it's collectors items well, that's nice to hear <laughs> you didn't know that <laughs> well I kind of knew it <laughs> All right, and look at this little egg right here. Hey, Zane, check this out. This is like a, a little tiny Fabergé egg, and look at what happens when you open it. Oh, my gosh. Look at how beautiful that is. Some of them are actually functional, right, Pete? Um, most of them, yeah. And you're going to be out at the show this weekend? Yes. Are you going to be selling your pieces? Yes. Excellent. Are you going to be making them while you're there? No. Can't do that, huh? <laughs> do you make them out of your house? Do yes. you have a studio? Yes. I how long have you been silversmithing? For 44 years. 44 years. Well, Pete, 
Acuzito, this is something that you want to have in your dollhouse collection. Go by this weekend. We have all the information on our website and how you can visit Pete and see all of these works of art up close and personal. Yeah. Ginger said the hardest part was coming up with the idea. I bet. <laughs> I bet. Just getting started, Just getting right? getting started. Well, these are exquisite. They're absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing your craft. And don't forget tonight, of course, the Bachelor Final Room. Oh. We'll, see who, we'll see if I was right tomorrow morning. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.